So I think I'm live now. Let me just set this because two cameras. I have uh, Facebook and uh, Instagram, and uh, haven't done this before. So let, let's hope it will work out. It says live there, live there. Uh, <coughs> let me see, let me see, yes. Okay. Let's just get my papers right. Like this camera this okay uh, welcome to this uh, facebook and instagram live session uh, i am santiago nieva uh, high performance director in uh, boxing federation of india and um, <clears throat> i'm coaching the elite men for the last uh, three years i've been in the more than three years now um, i've been at the major championships uh, for the last years like the commonwealth games Asian games Recently, the Olympic qualification, World Championships, Asian Championships, and so on. Uh, so now I'm pretty familiar with the Indian boxing. I'm a former international player myself. Uh, I was a, a boxer participating in, in major championships like, like the World Championships. I did not qualify for the Olympics. My biggest achievement was uh, uh, I won gold in the for the Bacardin tournament in Cuba, strong international tournament. I beat the, the two best Cubans that time. And um, uh, for a couple of months, I was ranked number one in the world until we went for world championships. And then I, I lost the first bout. Um, I, I retired pretty early. Uh, when I was 23 years old, I started uh, coaching more than 20 years ago. Uh, first in Argentina, um, I was a national team coach. I have been a professional coach, then I was coach in, in Sweden for, for 10 years. I uh, was also a national team coach and, and like a sport director before coming to India uh, more than three years ago. <clears throat> um, I was uh, for four years uh, secretary in the Coaches Commission in International Federation, AIBA, and uh, I've held uh, uh, many international courses for coaches uh, all over the world. I'm going to talk about high performance training in boxing, how we uh, train, uh, how we prepare uh, our national team for, for the Olympic Games and the major competitions. First, because some of you are not uh, maybe familiar with uh, our type of boxing, I'll give a brief introduction about uh, how is our sport. Uh, about three rounds of uh, three minutes. Um, so compared to professional boxing, where you box maybe 10 rounds or 12 rounds, it's a much more fast-paced, high-intensity bouts. Uh, we have one minute rest uh, in, in between the rounds. Um, and in a competition, you, you do maybe four, five, or six bouts to, to go all the way for, for the gold medal. Um, in our sport, there are not many knockouts. We have pretty padded gloves. And, uh, so 90% uh, in men competing and women, more than 90 of the bout finish on a point decision. Uh, the second most common uh, um, end of the bout is that the referee stops the contest called the uh, RSC. Sometimes uh, we have abandon or, or disqualification, uh, but the uh, bouts are, are not uh, that common, particularly in men's boxing and in the weights. Um, a couple of years ago, they removed the headgear for the men, so now we have to deal with a lot of injuries, especially here around the eyes. The uh, of course, weight categories, 10 weight categories in both men and women. But for the Olympics, we have eight for the men and uh, five weights for, for women. To, to win a bout by points, we have, we have had also many changes in the same years. Uh, there was a scoring machine where you got points for every punch connected. Now we have what we call the 10 point must system where the winner of each round gets 10 points and the loser of the round will get nine, eight or seven. Seven is, is the le uh, least you can get. And then if you're totally outclassed, it was nine points or uh, if it is pretty clear, it can be 10, eight round. Uh, to the criteria to, to win the round, number one is the, the number of area. So how many times I connect with, with uh, Little, little force behind the punch. Um, that, that is the, the main criteria, uh, who scores the most. Number two, the tactical priority. Like if 
if the number of punches is closed, who is um, imposing himself or herself a, a little more. We used to say, which one of the two boxes would you like to be? Uh, and the third one is uh, uh, competitiveness, who shows little more uh, fighting spirit. So it's pretty subjective. Sometimes even we don't understand uh, how it works. To this, we have to add, uh, recently um, in the Olympic qualification and in the Olympics, the IOC Boxing Task Force, they have introduced like uh, open scoring of the round. So we didn't know until the bout uh, finished. Um, now, after every round, we get the score. And this, of course, uh, for the coach and, and for the boxer, knowing if you are rewarded for what you're doing for, for that work, or you have to maybe make some uh, changes. In close bouts, it doesn't make much of a difference because before, uh, after the second round, you, if you don't win the last round, uh, you, you will probably lose the bout. We used to say that it's very important to win the first round. Uh, that if you win the first round, if it's uh, half the bout, but that is uh, not always true. Uh, and we have some boxers. Uh, we have uh, Amit, for example, our, one of our top boxers. So many times is is behind round, and then he goes and, and wins the second. Round. So the bout does not finish until the last second that we know. <clears throat> Uh, I'll tell you about the structure uh, that we have. Basically, out of the national championships. That time we ha we have no camps from from their states and boards, and there we select uh, the boxers for the national camp, and we start uh, with around 55 boxers. We have to select all the medalists, 40 medalists, and then we select uh, the, the best boxers who lost in the prelim and other boxers who, who maybe could not participate for, for one reason or, or another. So we start a camp with um, 50, around 55 boxers. And after one or two months, we, we, have a, uh, we prune down the camp to 40, 42. Um, so the, those who, who cannot keep up, who do, it doesn't uh, maintain the level of, of the best boxers. Um, uh, we, we remove them to maintain high quality in the, in the camp. Uh, after two months, we used to have a new selection trial where the lower ranked boxers from camp and other states can send their strongest boxers um, to, to see maybe we have missed out on, on some boxer. And uh, this will repeat after months uh, during summertime, we repeat it again. Uh, where the lower ranked boxers, they have to build uh, that they are competitive uh, and we're giving chance. Selection for major competitions. For all these major championships, we have we have a system how we select the boxers. That has changed a little bit um, depending on competitions, but now we, we are pretty much set that we want to select those in the weight category who have proven themselves on several um, international com important international competitions against top opponents. Uh, those and they they are above their main competitors, uh, those we select without any trial. Uh, in the rest of the weight category, there is a fierce competition between many boxers. There we go for selection trials. And the selection trials can be between two boxers, can be three boxers, and up to four boxers. Uh, sometimes even the number five, even the number six in some weight categories are really very strong and have international uh, results. But we have to make the cut somewhere. So we have said up to four boxers otherwise. Uh, the trials becomes uh, a burden for, for the preparation, so, so that we, we want to, to avoid. In the trials, we, we have um, a system of five, five judges plus four uh, selection committee, where, where I'm a part of the selection committee, who judge the bout to make sure that we get the, as fair result as possible. Want we want all boxers to, to feel that there is a, a, a selection process. Um, in the camp, we have a, a staff. We, uh, in the last camp, we, we had uh, elite men camp. We had 11, 11 coaches. Uh, and our support staff consists of, we have uh, two doctors. We have four physiotherapists, three masters, uh, and two video analysts. Apart from, from those, 
uh, uh, staff. In uh, our main camp in Patiala, we, ha we have the uh, sports science faculty uh, and we have uh, great support there. We have uh, psychologists, nutritionists, physiologists, uh, biochemistry, we can do some testing and, and so on. So, so we have a, a pretty solid um, setup. We always try to do the, uh, our next target is to, to get one the strength and conditioning coach. Um, we, we always try to improve our setup, but um, I would say we, for international standard, we, we are pretty okay. <clears throat> um, our competitions, I will explain a little bit about how are our uh, competition. Uh, like I said, the major competitions are one competitions or the, the major championships, Asian championships, Commonwealth Games and Asian Games, Olympics and qualifiers for, for the Olympics. On second priority level, we have the, the major international tournaments. Uh, each boxer we try to send to, to a number of international tournaments, usually between three, three to six for the for the top players. Um, we have India Open. We have uh, our um, uh, many tournaments in Europe and, and Asia, um, and also of course the, the national championships. On the priority three, uh, we have other international competitions. Um, of, of lower, lower level and uh, some state and departmental competitions. And on priority four, we, we have one day competitions, uh, we call them fight night, where, where our camp boxers uh, compete against some uh, nearby uh, to, to keep in, in shape, some for, for a tournament. Sometimes when we are abroad, we uh, in camp, we participate in, in some dual match, which is part of the, of the training process. Okay, we're gonna start looking at the boxing training. What are the important important factors in, in the boxing? For us, the, the main thing is the, the sparring sessions. Um, we use normal two sessions in a week. In the, in the preparatory, we, we have maybe we start with without sparring, then with one sparring, then we mix two sparrings, one sparring. And normally after, mostly we do uh, two sparring sessions. Uh, and before uh, major competition, sometimes we have uh, uh, three sparrings to model a little bit. Well, um, I like density as close as uh, possible to the bout. So our sparrings, they are, they are pretty tough. We have a coach who goes in as a, as a referee. Um, and as long as it's competitive, they, they work full out. Um, <clears throat> In the preparatory periods, we can do four to five rounds little, to get a little more volume. Rounds are longer. Uh, I have worked before up to four minutes. Now I have put the limit on three, three minutes, 45 seconds, because uh, I want the intensity not, not to go down too much. Uh, then we go down to 330, which is our standard, and then we'll be close to important, important 315, and in the tapering period, 310 or, or uh, in the specific preparation, uh, the sparring sessions are either three, one versus one, three rounds, because I want to see this, how I react against the opponent of the first round, how the second round, and how I make adjustments for, for the And that you don't get when you have different sparring partners. If partners is good for, for variation, I go against a southpaw, a ball boxer, against an attacking boxer, and so on. But I like to see how is my thinking how I make adjustments after every round. So when we are close to competitions, we spar three rounds at, at as close as possible as the competition, uh, the, similar to the, to the competition. Um, apart from sparring, we have the school fight sessions where we work on, on technical, tactical aspects, uh, and there the intensity is lower and we, we do more rounds. Uh, I do work maximum nine rounds and the preparatory periods eight to nine rounds, um, then closer to the competition, six to a little more free work and little high intensity. Um, and in the tapering period, four to six rounds, uh, and we do <clears throat> a little more free work. When we work uh, more rounds, we do more technical, some, some technical works mixed with some free work, some free tasks. Um, and the closer to the competition, uh, we give a little more freedom to, to the boxers. 
um, school boxing. Here we work mostly on the technical aspects, uh, punches, movements, defense. Uh, this we do almost almost in session, around 10 to 20 minutes. Same here in the preparatory periods, a little longer, a little more in detail, closer to the competition, sure. a uh, little more free and a little more flow dynamic with, the, with speed. Uh, individual work with the coach, we try to give them, the boxers, uh, this very important aspect, uh, psychology and to, to work on things, to work on, on technical detail. <clears throat> some tactical things, positioning, balance, etc. cetera. Um, because we are so many boxers, uh, it's not always possible, but we try to, so that every boxer gets some type of individual work uh, one or two times per week, at least, and the top boxers sometimes uh, more often. Um, this little boxing work that we do in training. <clears throat> If you look at uh, boxing, apart from the technical and tactical aspects, I said that uh, our bouts are pretty short, only uh, nine minutes. Um, so we need pretty explosive. We look at the, uh, the demands. Uh, we want to be explosive and being able to work at a high intensity for those three plus three plus uh, three minutes. Um, so to be able to do that, we need a good base of um, uh, aerobic conditioning for uh, for recovery uh, and we need a good strength also to be able to convert that into power and uh, speed so when we plan the training <clears throat> we first we have the, the competitions the the major competitions and from there we we decide which preparatory competitions we need to to prepare to to come in optimum shape for, for the main competition. Uh, and then we divide the, the year in different blocks with the with different uh, targets. Um, we have two preparatory. In the, uh, in the first one, we make sure to, to build a good aerobic base. We work a lot on the conditioning and, of course, technical, tactical aspects. Um, when we have built that, uh, we concentrate more on the strength so that we don't uh, strength and, and then on uh, power. And we don't want to, to mix too much. In uh, boxing, we, we love we love to mix everything together, a little bit of everything, but um, we have to, to listen to, to experts, what, what does uh, sports science say? And sometimes we, we need to separate a little bit to, to ensure that we get quality in the training. Um, <clears throat> So in the first preparatory period, uh, a lot of uh, aerobic uh, we do some long distance running, sometimes more, uh, more than 40 minutes up to one hour. Um, after the first pre preparatory period, we, we remove those too long, too long uh, sessions because when we work on, on uh, especially when we work on the explosive on, on power, uh, uh, we don't want to, to mix too, too many much volume on the on the running. <clears throat> uh, and then we have little, little medium to 40 minutes uh, running mixed with some uh, longer intervals um, of 25 to, to 35 uh, minutes uh, also we, we used to have um, some game some uh, most boxes uh, like to play football i like to play football i'm from argentina so that's that's uh, normal and uh, after the the game we continue with 10 or 15 minutes running um, <clears throat> On the uh, every week we set a load, a uh, physical load, medium, um, and decide from there uh, how many sessions we do on the strength, how many sessions we do on the conditioning, and what type of conditioning, what type of uh, of strength training we, we do. Uh, <clears throat> the strength training uh, we have different type of uh, of uh, training uh, also during the year. Um, we start with a little more technical functional training, uh, then some basic strength, go up to do a maximum strength, and then we convert that into explosive strength or power and uh, speed strength close to, to the competition. We don't want to, to work uh, too much on 
too close to the competition on, on maximum strength, but they will work on, on power and speed. Uh, so first block, important with uh, endurance. Second block, important with the uh, strength. And then we have built the base to be able to, to have many high intensity boxing sessions here in the, in the period of the sport to have high quality, high intensity boxing sessions with good sparring, good intensity in the, in the um, uh, technical, tactical work on the bag and, and so on. Um, so when we have uh, built that uh, uh, base, we, we are able to, to keep up uh, very, very intensity training without having uh, to, to get in injured. Um, <clears throat> we divide the boxing sessions in uh, red sessions, which are with the with, uh, highest intensity, with, uh, with, uh, which produce a lot of uh, lactic acid, where we work on 90% maximal heart rate. Um, and the technical sessions, less than 80% of the maximum heart rate we, we are yellow. And those one in between, which we don't try to put every session like that, the orange ones, uh, 80 to 90% uh, of intensity. And there we try to, to make the difference that not put all the sessions in 80 to 90 percent. That those who, who have to be high, uh, we work we work high, and those who have to be low, we, we maintain low. <clears throat> uh, the conditioning uh, the same. I said we have those um, more than 40 minutes low low uh, aerobic work, maybe 130 to 150 uh, pulse. We go by the by the heart rate, the individual heart rate uh, of the boxes, uh, depending on their maximum heart rate. This does not work 100%, uh, but some, some of the boxes, they, they use, they use the, the heart rate monitor and can individualize which intensity they, they have to work on. Um, from 20 to 40 minutes, maybe uh, 150 to 160 heart rate, and the, those little more intense intervals, uh, 170 to, to 190. This way we can individualize a little bit the, the conditioning training. Um, <clears throat> this uh, strength training, um, the strength sessions, I said we have different programs depending on what type of strength, uh, but basically uh, one strength, strength session, uh, one, one warm-up exercise, a complex exercise uh, for then uh, one uh, technical drill exercise with uh, with bar, and then two two main exercises uh, for strength or for power, depending on on the if it is a strength session or a, or a power session. We also have some mixed sessions. Then we have maybe one one, uh, and then two or three complementary exercises where we work on uh, on upper body or core strength. Uh, some gymnast gymnastics exercises or or some uh, power and speed exercises. Sometimes uh, some sprint jumps and medicine ball. And um, when, when we are in the in the sport specific, working more for for explosiveness. When in the tapering period, last two three weeks before the main competitions, we we change our uh, strength program um, and got short sessions. Uh, one warm-up session, two explosive sessions, and one uh, complementary uh, exercise just to, to maintain a little bit of strength. Okay, so the main competitions. Uh, I said priority one, priority two, priority three, priority four, depending on the priority of the competition. Um, we start tapering a couple of weeks before. In the main competition, normally three weeks before, we start reducing the, the volume, maintaining the intensity, maintaining the quality on the boxing sessions. We have many, the most important sparring sessions uh, we have in this tapering period. And norm, many times, yeah, I would say normally, we're abroad in an international camp for international sparring. Uh, last time before the Olympic qualifiers, we also brought some some international sparring to, to India because 
we have good quality sparring in India, but if you spar the same week, even if you have three, four, five different sparring partners in the end, you know each other pretty well. So there we want the, the international sparring that, that's important for us. Um, <clears throat> so we, uh, yeah, we reduce the load, we change the, the weight training program, we maintain some uh, aerobic uh, work, but the high intensity work we do in, in boxing, many, many intervals, short, there are short intervals in, in the bag and the sparring sessions, very important. Um, <clears throat> we try to uh, model the competition uh, and we used to do three uh, sparring sessions on um, every second day um, to, and finish the last sparring uh, normally five, five to six days before the first day of the competition. Of course, we, there is always risk for, uh, for injury, but um, without sparring, uh, it is not possible. And in all sparring sessions, we, we have headgear and we have bigger gloves than, than the competition. Uh, I already touched a little bit on the strength. Um, we're going to explain further. Uh, when I started boxing, uh, strength training with weights uh, was like, oh no, 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 don't, this, this is not good for you. This, you, you will be heavy, you will become slow, you will become stiff. Uh, and that, I would say, have changed very much uh, during the years. And, and today, uh, we know that, no, it's, it's contrary. If you do it right, uh, you can become uh, stronger and uh, more explosive and, and so on. Um, and most of our ex, uh, exercises, uh, we, can, we can say, are complex exercises with free weights, which work on balance and coordination. Um, so we don't want to isolate uh, a certain muscle uh, working in, in a machine, which has nothing to do with it. But we try to, to work as many muscle groups as possible um, with free weights. Uh, and use ex exercise hand foot co coordination, very important. Um, to gain, we need to come out from our comfort zone. We need to work um, on high intensity. Um, so strength exercises, we want to be from 70 to, to 100% um, of our maximum, we, we need to work. Uh, and power exercises between 70 and 90%. And for some, uh, for some speed, speed strength, there we, we go low, uh, maybe 10 to 40 percent at maximum speed, but um, 70 to 90 percent with hand foot coordination exercises. Um, <clears throat> and we have to work on uh, lower, extremity, uh, lower extremity strength, including the core, like squat exercises, uh, lower extremity power. Uh, including the core, like cleans, jerks, power clean, uh, power snatch, etc. Uh, on upper body strength uh, and power, push press, bench press, jerk, split jerk, uh, lower back exercises, good morning, deadlift, and different variations. Um, and some of them are the main exercises, and the others, uh, we do some complementary exercises. Problem is, when people put the complementary exercises above uh, the main exercises uh, that we, we try to do. These are our main exercises, and then we add one, two, or three complementary exercises. Um, <clears throat> to see improvement, to, to measure the improvements, we do some tests uh, on the boxers. We, we have a test battery where we do a physical profile uh, on the boxers. Uh, we used to do this two times per year, and some of the tests we, we do more often. Um, where we, do, we test different qualities, we test the aerobic endurance, the anaerobic muscle endurance, the uh, strength and uh, the power, um, and try to see where boxers lack and, and need some, some more training. This helps us in the, in the planning also. So if we have the first period of um, aerobic endurance um, and some boxer uh, having tested on, on the aerobic endurance and is pretty poor, then we can uh, do it his, that period longer for him, one, one or two weeks longer to, to get some more 
volume training on the aerobic endurance. If some some uh, boxer needs more, but is very good on on aerobic, the other way around this period, and he, that boxer will go for for little strength. This way we can individualize a little bit. Uh, it's difficult with with so many boxers, but uh, this we try to do. Uh, <clears throat> the for me. The, the most important uh, is, is to, to see their, their uh, aerobic endurance, uh, to make sure that the boxer is fit uh, and have a good recovery, because we need to, to be able to work, uh, like I said, many, many training sessions uh, during long periods of the year. We have tough competitions and so on. And um, if they don't have a, a, a good recovery, um, they will probably get injured. Um, so we have the <clears throat> VO2 uh, t max test, the uh, maximum uh, oxygen uptake. Um, but more practically, we use the Cooper test, uh, 3,000 meters. Um, and this, we have a, a lot of data. Uh, so we know pretty much uh, the boxers, if they are good or, or not. Um, and um, there, we, no, normally, we want them to be under 11 minutes in the 3,000 meters, uh, and preferably the, the lower weight, they, they, they are under 1040, 1030, and we have some boxes who are even under 10 minutes. One thing which uh, I use a lot is the video analysis. We have two video analysts in, in the camp. We record uh, all the sparring sessions. We have uh, three cameras uh, set up in the, for every ring, and uh, soon we're gonna we're gonna get a, a new system, which um, they already implemented in in Aji Stadium, which will recover the whole uh, boxing hall. Uh, we we have mostly our video analysts with us in the in the competition. We record our bouts. We see our own performances. We record our opponents. Um, we try to look at the most common situations, uh, the, the situations that uh, we need to, to handle well, uh, which situations to... So in, in uh, the sparring sessions, um, we, mark, we mark the, the situations, and then uh, every once a week or once every two weeks, uh, we have a, a meeting with the boxers and we go more into detail. We also have a, a WhatsApp group where we put all the sparrings and, and the most important situations where, where they can watch. And uh, boxers, um, they are they're really, they're really, really interested, taking interest uh, in this and uh, uh, they, they analyze the performance and they try to improve and, and you can see the difference when, when they understand um, what things uh, are in, uh, important uh, for them to, to master um, and, and what things to try to, to avoid. Uh, we also do technical analysis. Um, we have some programs, Co Coaches Eye, I, I use, we can do, do with the phone and, and our video analyst do with the iPad on the school boxing sessions or on the bag and where you, you can go frame and see the uh, positioning, the balance and um, so uh, also this this uh, very important because when you box at full speed it's difficult even with the, with the normal eye to to see for the coach and and obviously for the boxer um, so this way it's uh, it's a great tool for uh, analyzing on the, on the technical execution also we use it in the in the straight training on the technical lift we use the this uh, frame by frame, so they can see their, their position and and um, so make sure that they lift correctly. Okay, before we go to some uh, questions, um, I'll, I'll speak a little bit about the, the recovery, our recovery strategies. Um, for me, the most important, uh, having a good uh, aerobic base, I already said that a couple of times, um, after every intensity session that they do a proper cool down, 15, 20 minutes, uh, low intensity, 
uh, jogging or cycling. We have three three cycles in, uh, in the boxing hall um, to to remove uh, lactic acid and get a faster recovery. Um, then obviously uh, nutrition, hydration, proper rest, uh, and good sleep, good night sleep. Um, that that we want them to to get a good quality sleep. And um, today the the phones and modern technology and Instagram and all this we know we know especially young people they to go in there and they, they don't get the quality maybe they, they get the hours but they don't get the, the quality sleep so we, we try to remind them of, of the, this importance apart from from this um, which are the most important we, we have um, uh, also some ice bath massage we, we, we have uh, three masters in the camp boxes used to get massage uh, once a week um, one thing which is very traditional in, in boxing and especially in India is sauna bath uh, but that we have learned is, is not very good for recovery. Actually, it, it adds maybe to, more to, to the work. So um, instead, we try to, to go for the ice bath or contrast bath in, in some cases. Um, this was a little briefing about um, uh, the way we prepare, uh, what things I consider important. Um, if you have any questions, I have not seen the, the, any comments. Uh, I'm too busy talking. So, but if you have any questions, you write them down, and uh, I will try to answer. Uh, if not, I will, I will watch after. I'll try to, to add in the comment section if it's possible. I have to see the comments. <laughs> I'm not too technical, but. I hope there was no break at least. What, here is one question, but how, how uh, what are the prerequisites you take into consideration while spotting young talent? Uh, uh, yeah, so when we select uh, the boxers, um, number one, we, we select the winners, those uh, 40 who medal, they, they have to come in. And then we try to see uh, some good ones. And, uh, we go by by the, the boxing how the boxing skills the, the ring IQ. If you see some, some boxer with the uh, with a good ring, uh, some potential, um, there are many ways to win in boxing. So, if little little uh, difficult question because sometimes sometimes you 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 make mistakes. Yeah, so you 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 don't. It's some cases are very clear. Everybody can see them. Okay, this guy lost. He's 90 years old. He just came up from, from from the huge potential. He will improve. He will get physically stronger, and so on. Um, but if, with so many boxers, we have uh, more than 310 participants in the national championships. Um, so we, sometimes it's, it's a little difficult. And and uh, there are many good boxers, even international level boxers, who who miss out on coming to the national team in the lower weight categories. In the higher weight categories. Don't same quality more than three, four, or five boxers. Uh, but in the lower weight categories, um, sometimes it's uh, it's uh, tricky. And this is why we we give a new chance after two, three months, and another chance. So those who miss out um, from from the national that, that they keep training, they keep motivated, and then they say, okay, I missed out. Uh, there is another chance uh, soon to prove myself. Uh, let's see if there is any other question. Kima, do you see any question? Okay, very good. How many hours of how many what, what many sessions or how many hours? How many sessions? Good. Um, maybe I missed out on on that part. Normally, we train ten to eleven sessions in a week. If we are in a training camp, sometimes we we put three sessions in one day but here in Patiala because we are we are in camp for 10 months so yeah, so two sessions a day so the, the standard monday tuesday two sessions on wednesday one session get some uh, recovery uh, uh, thursday friday two sessions and saturday can be one session and every second saturday two sessions um and Normally we have sparring on Tuesdays and uh, Fridays. Little bit um, 
we, we separate the, the training sessions based on uh, science and uh, pra practical and tradition as well. Uh, so we, um, we we are we are no sports scientists. We are we are boxing coaches, and it's important that the boxing coach is in charge uh, of of the the of this ship um, of the of, of the planning because this the scientists they, they add a lot of, of knowledge. Sometimes they, they don't understand the damn thing about boxing, right? Um, yeah. So that this is this is very important. Uh. Strategy four for best fight sparring before competition. Um, I don't know if I understand the question, but uh, like I said, I like before major competitions three sparrings on alternate days, uh, last sparring session five five to six days before the first day of the competition and go three rounds of three minutes against uh, opponents and uh, if possible for, for us uh, international opponents who, who can prepare us for for the main competition um, this is this is the, the, for me uh, very important some other Uh, yeah, one who started late, it's, it's never too late. Look at, uh, we have uh, Satish Kumar, he qualified for the Olympic super heavyweight. I don't know, but he was pretty old uh, for, in boxing standards when he started. Uh, one former teammate of mine in Argentina, Sergio Martinez, he, he started very late. Uh, um, I think he was 19 when, when he started boxing. He reached uh, all the way to, to Las Vegas. So, so uh, there, in, in women's boxing, in the higher weights, uh, Anthony Joshua he was 18. First time he stepped into to a boxing uh, gym, and four years later he was Olympic champion. Um, so there are countless of examples, especially in um, uh, higher weights. Uh, in women's boxing, it's pretty uh, common because uh, it's a relatively new sport compared to, to men's boxing. Um, I would say it would be very difficult in, in 49, uh, 52 and, and the, the smaller weights because uh, there are other aspects that might make it difficult, but uh, don't give up. Have faith in, in yourself and, and uh, uh, do, if you like it, go for it. Ah, good question, good question. I, I didn't mention. Uh, the body weight is always an issue for for us, uh, not not for us for, for, for the. Uh, and uh, we we have a chart where where they should not be above um, in the lower weights around three kilos above their weight, and the higher weights up to up to four kilos, uh, and five weeks before the competition reduce by half a kilo um, per week so that. Uh, they, they they are strong and don't don't make, make up and down up and down up and down. Uh, it's obviously not uh, always that easy to follow. It sounds good in theory. The, the, the reality tells us different, and in individual cases uh, also. But we try and we 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 talk to the boxers and we we control weigh them two twice a week. We we weigh them um, and and monitor the, the weight so. That they come, uh, they come strong and healthy for the competition. Uh, this is not a, a short race. Boxing training, we want them to to last for a long period of time. And actually, in, in the last few years, many of our boxers they, they moved up in weight. Um, uh, Amit from 49 to 52. Uh, Gorov Solanki, Sachin from 52 to now 57. Um, Manish and Shiva from. Three and so many of our boxers they, they moved up in weight, and um, so we, we don't want them to. Uh, Kavinder from 52 was killing himself to 52. One day he comes and, and says, I want to move up. You look at him and look, he looks small. He came to 57, no problem. After a couple of months, he, he beat the champion from, from Kazakhstan. Um, so sometimes we, we fool ourselves 
uh, I have also done that, trying to, oh, no, I, I will be big in, in this weight category, but actually I'm, I'm killing myself, I'm becoming slow, um, and in the end, boom, it's better to move up, feel, feel strong and healthy. Yeah, uh, I don't know if, if I said it. So our standard, we do three sessions per week. In the beginning, when we concentrate on the aerobic uh, work, we, do, we start with two sessions. Uh, then we do three sessions. And when we come down to the tapering, only one or two sessions for, for a little, uh, little, little explosive. Um, but that, uh, th that is what we do. Uh, I wanted to try one time uh, about four sessions, but we, we have kept it there. Three sessions, between two and three sessions per week, I think is uh, good for boxer. Which type of training? Uh, yeah. So in the competition period, the main focus is the boxing training. So you put, okay, these are the boxing sessions that I need. And then, okay, the others around that, so, so that it allows you, uh, allows you recovery for, uh, for the important boxing sessions. How many sessions in a week? Um, I would say for high performance, um, you, you need to train 9, 10, 11, 12, sessions uh, in a week at least otherwise uh, you you will not get enough uh, volume of course this is difficult um in uh, we have we have the, the privilege that we our boxers they're full-time boxers they don't have to go to work they don't they don't go to study they only uh, box so they get the recovery they get the rest they, can get it. they don't have to even even cook they get the food um so uh, we we have no problem in, in training a little harder. If you have a lot of other side activities, you have to see if you can uh, keep the same load in uh, or, or you have to adapt a little bit. But to reach world class, you need certain certain volume of uh, training. I think we are around 750 hours in a year uh, of training. Um, and I would say it would be very difficult to less than... than uh, 650 or something like that, uh, difficult to, to reach uh, world class. Yeah, uh, good question. So, yes, training is individual, adaptations are individual. Um, so, when we have, a, we have a base program, but that cannot suit everybody, but it will suit most parts. And you have to see where you have to be a little flexible, um, which one who maybe needs a little more, a little less. I, I said uh, that before, that the main, main two things are if good aerobic base or, or poor aerobic base, okay, so needs to work more on, on, on this aerobic, because for him, it will not be enough. For this other guy, there's no need to, to put more and more and more on the aerobic because he's at a good level for boxing. Uh, the same with the strength, the same with the power, who needs maybe a little more strength, um, who, who needs uh, more on, on power. Uh, boxing training, everybody needs. High intensity training, everybody needs. Uh, on the technical aspects, uh, yes. So, so we work on, on uh, one, one uh, team like might be long distance boxing. You have a short, short guy who, who likes to, to fight on the inside, but even that boxer point, at some point in, in one bout or against a certain opponent, he will also have to work on the, on the outside. So, so, um, number one, it's impossible to individualize everything uh, with, with so many boxers. Um, uh, number two, uh, a boxer has to even though I'm specialized in, in one type of fighting, in one type of fighting, I need to, to cover, have a broad arsenal of, of uh, weapons. Um, and like I said, I, we try to give them one-on-one -on -one individual training. And in every session, not every session, but most of the we give some time for, for individual uh, training. Um, where boxers can do, can do their own exercises. Somebody needs some training, somebody needs 
um, likes to do some exercises, some some uh, go some extra round on the bag and so on. So, so even though uh, most of our training is a, is a group training, we uh, we definitely try to give space for for individual uh, training and preferences. Uh, okay, this is the subject that has to do with the um, uh, with this training part. But amateur boxing is the boxing you see in the Olympics, in the Asian Games, Commonwealth Games, uh, where we box in tournaments, three rounds only. And if you win, you go on to the next round. And and if you win, all the way to the final. Professional boxing has a different uh, uh, system. Uh, we have some professional boxers, um, uh, most notably uh, because Christian, also in the, in the women's camp, we, we have some boxers who have done some, some uh, professional bouts. But in, in professional boxing, you can compete from four rounds all the way up to a title, title bout, 12 rounds. And you, you box for titles, and uh, it's a, a different competition, totally, totally different. But boxing is boxing. Um, so in the case of Vikas, he went to he had a couple of bouts, he came back, he had a little bit uh, adaptation, maybe one month, and then he was, he was back to, to his, his best level. So um, today, uh, it, which was not allowed before, uh, before 2016, now the um, boxers, they can do both. Uh, we have some examples, especially from Uzbekistan, uh, and now, now the Olympic qualifiers, the, especially in the women's boxing, uh, many boxers who came from professional uh, back to amateur. How to tolerate the, the decisions that go against you? You know, we in boxing, we always think that we have won, but the other guy thinks that, that he won. So uh, sometimes we have to, okay, let me, let me rewatch uh, the bout and look at it without any emotion. Uh, I have, I have uh, been convinced. Um, I, there was one bout in, in World Championships. I was convinced we had been robbed, uh, not the last World Championship previously. Uh, and I even told uh, some of the technical delegates, hey, this, this decision very bad. Then I watched the bout and OK. Maybe I think, but I can understand that it could have gone either way. It was a split decision. Uh, so that is uh, one thing. It's difficult. You, we, nobody thinks, no, um, I, I cannot see uh, neutral. Everybody thinks neutral. But we have a tendency to, to look a little bit more uh, away. Um, obviously, sometimes this injustice uh, happen. Everybody has, uh, has um, felt them and it, it uh, hurt us so much. It's, ourselves and, and for, for the boxer, you know, to, to see a boxer having done uh, enough and, and boxing really well and not getting rewarded, it, it's, a, it's a killer. But it's part of our sport. Um, it's difficult to, to come away from. Uh, it's a subjective sport. Most judges, they, they do the best they can. Uh, I am judged myself in our selection trials. And uh, I have no favorites. I want, I want the one to represent India. I want to, the, the best one. I don't want the, the number two, number three, because that will be more difficult to, to get a good result. Um, and I, I see the bout uh, one way, uh, and the majority of, of the, the judges uh, see it a, a different way. Um, most, mostly uh, uh, not, but it can, can happen, can happen. And it happens to have, we have a, Eight one decisions. We can have seven two decisions. It happens. It happens. And mostly they are, they are very close bouts. Uh, sometimes in the last second, and you don't know who who to give. It was very close. And but you have to give every round. You have to give a winner. Um, and sometimes it's it's a little tricky. And without. I don't understand the question. Could, could we train without passive? Uh, if you're talking about, about re recovery, and we, we're talking about training, 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 I said the training week, the physical load, sometimes heavy, sometimes medium, but sometimes we need to go down with, with, with a low, low load to get a little uh, super compensation. Um, we cannot kill harder, harder, harder. In, in, 
in the long run, yes, we have to increase the load, but it cannot be done straight up like this. We have to go a little, little bit like this. Um, and uh, after the, the nationals, like, okay, now forced, forcefully we, we have no camp and, and boxes, they, they are training, but off, for example, after the Olympic qualifiers, we gave them complete rest for, for two weeks uh, and then starting training a little bit and, and gradually increasing the load. Sometimes you need that, boom, come away a little bit from boxing and uh, from, from training, do some other things that you like uh, so that you load full of energy when, when you come back. Yeah, this is a, a controversial issue with the, the headgear. I am against removing the headgear. Um, we have had so many cuts um, in, in uh, international competitions. We have some some of our boxers. They they get uh, three four every single year, every tournament. Uh, there, there is a cut. Uh, fortunately, now in the in the Olympic qualifiers, um, the up until uh, up until the qualification, we had no single cut. Then because Christian uh, got a cut, so we, we we didn't when he was he was qualified he beat the, the Kazakh number three in the world in the semi-final and we didn't we didn't put him in the final why why to risk unless why to to, to risk it was was a bad cut um so so uh, I don't like but okay these these are the rules um and some some countries uh, have gone back to to using the head getting national competitions and uh, uh, I think we will do that uh, in India as well. In all our trials, we have uh, we have headgear to uh, the injuries. Um, so, uh, what can I say? Hopefully, uh, after the Olympics, or so sometime the, the headgear will, will come back. I think so because this has it, they tried to do this, and uh, apparently, it has. In my opinion, it does not work. Body shots. I love body shots. I love body shots. And and uh, it's not that all others hit body shots and Indian boxers don't hit body shots. No. Uh, so, but yes, can we can we go more for the body? Definitely, definitely. Uh, it's important part. You the, the variation. Number one, variation up and down too. Otherwise, you have only one target. You become predictable. So th that is very important. Uh, number two, you make a lot of damage with body shots. You you get a, a good. Good uppercut to the liver, and you will see the, the opponent slowing down. You get some good in the solar plexus, you will see them uh, slowing down. Uh, but uh, variation and and some some good, especially down to to the liver, is is very important part of boxing. I come from uh, uh, Latin American boxing, and uh, there you see so many everybody going down for for the body, uh, especially the liver. So when I come to India and uh, I get frustrated, I get frustrated when, when our boxes don't prove to the body. Fortunately, slowly uh, we're improving. We have some, some good body punchers. Um, but uh, yes, so I, my advice to all coaches, uh, tell them to uh, go for body shot. Not only blindly to, to the body, but work on this uh, variation. Uh, yeah, so strength training uh, we can do in in uh, for all uh, all weights. It's, it's not that uh, strength training is not only about the strength and power. It's also for injury prevention. You need you need to to, to strengthen your uh, your body. Uh, you you will you will last longer. Uh, it's it's good for for health and it's good for for, for injuries. Um, obviously, you cannot put. Um, work on hypertrophy to, to build uh, big muscles if you have a problem with the weight. So you have to, to monitor the weight and work more on power or, or uh, fewer repetitions with the maximum strength where you don't get as much uh, hypertrophy. Um, so, so, but yes, uh, strength training 
is, is a natural important part of boxing. Not only, I know, or not everybody has this, the equipment that we have. Fortunately, now we, we have a, a very modern um, gym in, in, the, in the boxing hall with, with good equipment for, for free weights. Not everybody has that, but strength training, you, you, you start somewhere, you, you start on the floor with the push-ups, uh, you, you start with, with the chin-ups and whatever. So, what a bit. Hey, live video post, reconnecting. Uh, okay, I continue here on, on Facebook. Um, so there's a lot of, of strength and the, the specific specific uh, strength when we, we, we have to punch on, on the back, boom, boom, work on, on explosiveness. This uh, where we feel, we can feel the, the, the punching power also very important, I would add. <laughs> it's, it's an impossible question to, to answer. Um, so you um, you have to box where you feel uh, comfortable. Um, sometimes uh, some boxers can re reduce work and uh, and uh, be more competitive, uh, but not at the cost of health. Uh, okay, I think now it's uh, twelve o'clock, so we will cut here and. Uh, I will see if there are any questions that, that uh, I might answer later. Thank you very much to all of you for, for um, listening. Thank you to Sai for this opportunity, uh, BFI, of course, and all the boxers and, and coaches uh, out there. Denevado.